Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 15 of my Programming with Python 2.5 through 2.7 tutorial. Today, I'm going to show you how to develop GUI applications with the TK interface. Well, to do this, first off, we're going to have to import said interface, and I'm positive you know how to do that. If you didn't see the other tutorials, definitely look at them. I accidentally put another import in there. Import, and then we're going to also import another module that is going to allow us to pop message boxes up on the screen. To create a basic interface with Python and TK interface, and there's a million different ways that this is pronounced. I just pronounce it TK interface. I do not know the definitive name from the inventor of Python. And then I'm going to define what I want my GUI interface to be named, and I'm just gonna call it GUI example. Then you have to define how big you want your application to show up on the screen, and you use the geometry method for that. And I'm going to make it 450, and make sure I put an X in here, 300 plus 200 plus 200. This is an arbitrary thing. You can make it whatever you want, obviously. And then main loop, and that's all you have to do. And you can see GUI example popped up here on the screen with the right dimensions and everything. And you're probably saying, boy, that's really boring. So I'm going to show you how to make a button because that is quite impressive, of course. Actually, first I'm going to show you how to make a label. I'm going to define label text. And this is going to be the string value that is going to show up inside of said label. And to actually set that value, you have to call the set method. And I'm just going to say click button. Okay. Then you have to define the attributes that you want your label to have by calling the label method and starting off with app, which comes from up here, if you're wondering. Then text variable. This is going to set the value that is going to appear in the label. And I'm going to define a height equal to four. And then this is very important. You want to type call the pack method. And if we run this, you can see right here, click button. But there's no button to click. So let's make ourselves a button. As you can see, this is all very, very simple. And I'm going to show you here in a minute, you're actually going to be able to call all kinds of different methods based off of interaction that you have. You can also create a checkbox. And checkbox val is my variable name. It is not a specific name. And let's say I want to enter only integers. See, this allows you to enter strings. This allows you to enter integers. Well, of course I could allow for a string to be set if somebody checked my checkbox, but let's just say I didn't want that to happen. And I'm pretty much doing the same thing here again. And this is actually a label that's going to appear next to the checkbox. And let's just keep this simple. On that, you can see the checkbox happy appears over here. Now what I'm going to do is create a bunch of different things here right in a row. Like let's say we want to be able to accept information from a customer and it's going to be a string and we're going to have the original value be none and I'm going to name this your name equal to entry is very important. You have to call the entry method. And I'm going to have the value that shows up in here be equal to customer name. Well, since you didn't enter anything, that's going to show nothing on the screen. And then call pack again, and that'll throw it there. You can also create some radio buttons. And this time I'm going to make the value stored based off of the input equal to a string. And I'm going to set them by default to none so that they do not show up checked. This is very important. With radio buttons, you can only select one of them. So all my radio buttons are actually going to have the same name here, even though they're separate. And let's just say we're doing a single. All the code's available at New Think Tank, by the way. And it's all free. And it's all whatever you want to do with it. I don't care. And this time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call a method with command here. So that means whenever one of these radio buttons is clicked, it's going to call a method called bin clicked. And then just to show you, you can pack at the end of the screen here. And I'm actually going to just copy this and copy and paste that in there. And this time I'm going to say married, copy, paste. Okay, same thing all over again. And I'm going to show you what this method bin clicked is going to look like here in a second. But first I have to create a button. And there's going to be another tutorial that follows this to explain all the things I couldn't jam pack into this one tutorial. It's kind of complicated. And I'm going to give it the default value of click here. This is for the button again. And I'm going to give it a default width of 20. 
And with command, I'm saying if this button is clicked, I want to call a method called change label. And with command, I'm defining that if this button is clicked, I want to call a method called change label. And then close that off. And then button one dot pack. And here, I'm also going to define the position. By default, it's just going to continue to put these down here. So I actually technically don't have to do this, but I want you to know bottom. I could also put top, left, or right. I'm also going to show you how to use padding so that the button shows up real nice on the screen. And it's just padding for X and padding for Y. I'm going to make that 15. And I'm going to scroll up here and I'm going to create my methods that are going to be called. Then clicked. Saw previously where that's going to be called. And whenever it's clicked, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the value for the variable radio value equal to, I'm going to call REL status. Remember where I did this. See? REL status. And then I have variable right here is rel status so relationship status is what that stands for and i'm going to say get from that what it's going to do is again it's going to call the bin click method and then the value of radio one is going to be stored in single and then up here that's what i'm getting from it so that's what's going on there and now i'm going to call message box show info these are all methods that you have to call. These are all not invented names. These are real names. So definitely use these very specific names. I'm going to say you clicked and then radio value and return. And then there was another method that I called down here called command change label. So I have to create a method called change label. And this is just going to change this label right here. Name is equal to thanks for the click. And I'm going to call the get method to get the value they entered down here. See your name, your name get. That's how I get that. And then I'm going to set label text using the set method. And I'm going to set it to this string that I just created here. It should actually be label. And then what I'm going to do is call, I'm showing you a lot of methods here. So I know this, this is something that you have to kind of digest. But I never, I looked at a bunch of video tutorials, and while I don't like to say bad things about other people, I didn't find them to be quite so terribly useful. And this might not be useful for you either. <laughs> and then what I'm doing here is I'm saying, as in essence, I want to delete everything. So I want to delete what they currently have set in the name field. That's what this method does. And I want to delete from the, z from the zero index to the end. And then you need to say at what index point you want to start whatever you're going to put in here. And I'm going to put in my name is dark and return and if we run this you can see all these little things popped up here on the screen so you see here let's just go through it one by one click button this is the label text this is the label that you created and it has click button set as its default i haven't done anything to this yet so that's what it's going to be default then you have the checkbox that i created see text happy and i can check this or do whatever i want because i don't have a command set like i do down here and then this is where i'm asking for the name right here customer name string value none see there's nothing in there right now that's because i have none right here and then i'm using customer name for the value inside of here which you're going to see in a minute then you have a radio button single and married and whenever one of those is clicked let's just click it see that's whenever the message pops up in that message box right here this is where it it shows up you clicked and then the value of radio value pops up on the screen and then you have the guy that does a whole bunch of different things which is the button you can see bottom so it is set for the bottom of the screen and it's going to call change label you can also see it's nicely padded and everything here on the screen so what's going to happen change label when i click this button it's going to say thanks for the click and it's going to get the value that i put in here so let's just type in paul and it's going to create this string called name thanks for the click and in this situation it's going to return the name paul here and then what it's going to do is it's going to set the label text being this guy up here to this string that i created right here and then what it's going to do is delete paul out of here with this method and insert this string instead all with one press of the button boink thanks for the click paul my name is derek so that's a rough sort of quick way to work with methods, calling methods, and GUI tools with TK Interface. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Otherwise, till next time, where I will talk a little bit more about the TK Interface.